Chapter 4, Ahaziah reigns in Israel, 853 to 852 BC. Ahaziah the son of Ahab and Jezebel, became the ninth king over Israel in Samaria, in the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother who followed Baal worship. He walked in the way of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin, for he served Baal and worshipped him, and provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger, according to all that his father had done. 1 Kings 22 verses 51 to 53 Ahaziah fell through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria, and he was injured. So, he sent messengers and said to them, Go, inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I will recover from this injury. Then the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore, thus says the Lord, You will not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you will surely die. Therefore, Elijah departed from the messengers of Ahaziah. 2 Kings 1 verses 2 and 3 When the messengers returned to Ahaziah, they said to them, Why have you come back? They said to him, A man came up to meet us, and said to us, Go, return to the king who sent you, and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore, you will not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you will surely die. Then Ahaziah said to them, What kind of man was it who came up to meet you and told you these words? They answered him, A hairy man wearing a leather belt around his waist. And Ahaziah said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent to him a captain of fifty with his fifty men. They went up to Elijah, and there Elijah was, sitting on the top of a hill. And the captain spoke to him, Man of God, the king has said, Come down. Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I am a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. And fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty men. Then Ahaziah sent to Elijah another captain of fifty with his fifty men. And the second captain answered and said to Elijah, Man of God, thus has the king said, Come down quickly. Elijah answered and said to them, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty men. Again, Ahaziah sent a third captain of fifty with his fifty men. And the third captain of fifty went up, and came and fell on his knees before Elijah, and pleaded with him, and said to him, Man of God, please let my life and the life of these fifty servants of yours be precious in your sight. Look, fire has come down from heaven and burned up the first two captains of fifties with their fifties. But let my life now be precious in your sight. Therefore, the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him, do not be afraid of him. So, Elijah arose and went down with him to the king. Then Elijah said to him, Thus says the Lord, Because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, is it because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore, you will not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you will surely die. 2 Kings 1 verses 4 to 16 Then, Ahaziah died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. Ahaziah had no son, the dynasty ended, and Jehoram became king of Israel in his place, in the second year of Jehoram the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? 2 Kings 1 verses 17 and 18 Elijah ascends to heaven. In time past, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, 
please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. However, Elisha said, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. Therefore, they went down to Bethel. The sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? Elisha said, Yes, I know, keep silent. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. Moreover, Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. Therefore, they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? Again, Elisha answered, Yes, I know, keep silent. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. Nevertheless, he said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. Therefore, the two of them went on to the Jordan River. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When Elijah and Elisha had crossed over the Jordan, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, What may I do for you? before I am taken away from you. Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Therefore, Elijah said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be so for you, but if not, it will not be so. Then it happened, as they continued on and talked, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. 2 Kings 2 verses 1 to 11 Elisha saw Elijah go up by a whirlwind, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. Therefore he saw him no more. He took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him, and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah, struck the water, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, it was divided this way and that, and Elisha crossed over. 2 Kings 2 verses 12 to 14 When the sons of the prophets who were from Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him, and bowed to the ground before him. Then they said to him, Look now, there are fifty strong men with your servants. Please let them go and search for your master, lest perhaps the Spirit of the Lord has taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. Elisha said, You will not send anyone. Nevertheless, when the prophets urged him until he was ashamed, he said, Send them. Therefore, they sent fifty men, and they searched for three days, but did not find Elijah. And when they came back to Elisha, for he had stayed in Jericho, he said to them, Did I not say to you, Do not go? 2 Kings 2 verses 15 to 18 The prophet Elisha, 850 BC The men of the city said to Elisha, Please notice, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord sees but the water is bad, and the ground barren. Elisha said, Bring me a new bowl, and put salt in it. Therefore, they brought it to him. Then he went out to the source of the water, and cast in the salt there, and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water, from it there will be no more death or barrenness. Meanwhile, the water remains healed to this day, according to the word of Elisha, which she spoke. 2 Kings 2 verses 19 to 22 Elisha mocked. Then Elisha went up from there to Bethel, and as he was going up the road, some youths came from the city and mocked him. They said to him, Go up, you bald head. Go up, you bald head. Therefore Elisha turned around and looked at them, 
and pronounced a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then two female bears came out of the woods and mauled forty-two of the youths. Then Elisha went from there to Mount Carmel, and from there he returned to Samaria in the northern kingdom. 2 Kings 2 verses 23 to 25 Roman Catholic Church and Holy Water The Roman Catholic Church claims to possess holy water. They take water, put a pinch of salt in it, the priest or clergy prays over it, and they claim it then to be holy water. The Catholic Church is not by itself in using this ritual. It is common in many religions, except in true Bible-believing Christianity. It is presumed that the Catholic Church took the scripture out of context in 2 Kings 2 verses 19 to 22 and applied it to the water used in the church for cleansing, sacramental from protection against evil, and this is another deception in the church. The priests, who are sinful men, cannot make anything holy. The Lord makes things holy. Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water, from it there will be no more death or barrenness. In addition, the use of holy water was not in the time of the early church. In later documents, the apostolic constitutions attributed the precept of using holy water to the apostle Matthew going back to about 400 AD. Jehoram reigns in Israel, 852 to 841 BC. Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Jehoram became king over Israel at Samaria in the 18th year of Jehoshaphat king of Judah, and reigned 12 years. Jehoram, or Joram as he was sometimes called, was not the son of Ahaziah or grandson of Ahab, because Ahaziah had no sons and their dynasty ended. Jehoram did evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father and mother, for he put away the sacred pillar of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he persisted in the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin, he did not depart from them. Now Mesha king of Moab was a sheep breeder, and he regularly paid the king of Israel one hundred thousand lambs and the wool of one hundred thousand rams. It happened, when Ahab died, that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. Therefore, King Jehoram went out of Samaria at that time and mustered all Israel. Then he went and sent to Jehoshaphat king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? Jehoshaphat said, I will go up. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Then he said, Which way will we go up? Jehoram answered, by way of the wilderness of Edom. 2 Kings 3 verses 1 to 8 Therefore, Jehoram the king of Israel went with Jehoshaphat king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they marched on that roundabout route seven days, and there was no water for the army, or for the animals that followed them. The king of Israel said, Alas! The Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. However, Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? Therefore, one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha the son of Shaphat is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. Therefore, the king Jehoram and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. 2 Kings 3 verses 8 to 12 Elisha said to Jehoram, the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. Jehoram said to him, No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you, nor see you. But now bring me a musician. It happened, when the musician played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And Elisha said, Thus says the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. Thus says the Lord, You will not see wind, nor will you see rain, 
yet that valley will be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord, he will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. Also, you will attack every fortified city in every choice city, and will cut down every good tree, and stop up every spring of water, and ruin every good piece of land with stones. It happened in the morning, when the grain offering was offered, that suddenly water came by way of Edom, and the land was filled with water. 2 Kings 3 verses 13 to 20 When the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, all who were able to bear arms and older were gathered, and they stood at the border. Then they rose up early in the morning, and the sun was shining on the water, and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, This is blood, the kings have surely struck swords and have killed one another, now therefore, Moab, to the spoil. Then the Moabites came to the camp of Israel. Israel rose up and attacked the Moabites, so that they fled before them, and they entered their land, killing the Moabites. They destroyed the cities, and each man threw a stone on every good piece of land and filled it, and they stopped up all the springs of water and cut down all the good trees. But they left the stones of Kir Haraseth intact. However, the slingers surrounded and attacked it. So, when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him seven hundred men who drew swords, to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his eldest son who would have reigned in his place, and offered him as a burnt offering upon the wall, and there was great indignation against Israel. Therefore, they departed from him and returned to their own land. 2 Kings 3 verses 21-27 Elisha performs miracles. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant my husband is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Elisha said to her, What should I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? She said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then Elisha said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors' empty vessels, do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you should shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels, and set aside the full ones. The widow went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured them out. Now it happened, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. Her son said to her, There is not another vessel. Therefore the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God. And Elisha said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. 2 Kings 4 verses 1 to 7 Elisha and the Shunammite son. It happened one day that Elisha went to Shunam, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. It was, as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. The woman said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God, who passes by us regularly. Please, let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there, a table, a chair, and a lampstand, so it will be, whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. One day Elisha came there, and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite woman. When his servant had called her, she stood before him. And Elisha said to Gehazi, Say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. Elisha said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Actually, she has no son, and her husband is old. Therefore, Elisha said, Call her. When Gehazi had called her, she stood in the doorway. 
Then Elisha said, About this time next year you will embrace a son. The woman said, No, my lord. Man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. Nevertheless, the woman conceived, and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had told her. The child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said to his father, My head, my head. His father said to a servant, Carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees until noon, and then died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him, and went out. Then she called to her husband, and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys, that I may run to the man of God and come back. Her husband said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, It is well. Then she saddled a donkey, and said to her servant, Drive, and go forward, do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed, and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. It was, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her, and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with the child? She answered, It is well. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. Therefore, she said, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, get yourself ready, and take my staff in your hand, and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him, and if anyone greets you, do not answer him, but lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. Therefore, Elisha arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went on ahead of them, and laid the staff of the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore, he went back to meet him, and told him, saying, The child has not awakened. 2 Kings 4 verses 8 to 31 When Elisha came into the house, there was the child, lying dead on his bed. He went in therefore, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child, and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands, and he stretched himself out on the child, and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house, and again went up and stretched himself out on him, then the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite woman. So he called her. And when she came into him, he said, Pick up your son. Therefore she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground, then she picked up her son and went out. 2 Kings 4 verses 32-37 Elisha purifies the pot of stew. Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in the land. The sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said to his servant, Put on the large pot, and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. Therefore one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered from it a lapful of wild gourds, and came and sliced them into the pot of stew, though they did not know what they were. Then they served it to the men to eat. Now it happened, as they were eating the stew, that they cried out and said, Man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat it. Therefore, he said, Then bring some flour. And he put it into the pot, and said, Serve it to the people, that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. 2 Kings 4 verses 38 to 41 Elisha feeds one hundred men. A man came from Baal brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley bread, 
and newly ripened grain in his knapsack. And he said, Give it to the people that they may eat. But his servant said, What? Should I set this before one hundred men? Elisha said again, Give it to the people, that they may eat, for thus says the Lord, They will eat and have some left over. Therefore he set it before them, and they ate and had some left over, according to the word of the Lord. 2 Kings 4 verses 42 to 44 Naaman is healed of leprosy. Naaman was a commander of the army of Ben-Hadad II, the king of Syria. He was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. The Syrians had gone out on raids, and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who was in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who was from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. Therefore he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God, to kill and make alive, that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider, and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. 2 Kings 5 verses 1 to 7 When Elisha the man of God heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh will be restored to you, and you will be clean. Elisha did not go to the door to speak to Naaman face to face, he sent a messenger to him. The reason for this may have been that leprosy would render him unclean. Immediately, Naaman became furious, and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me, and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and wave his hand over the place, and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Farper, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? Therefore he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him, and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then, when he says to you, Wash, and be clean? Therefore he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. 2 Kings 5 verses 8 to 14 Naaman returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came and stood before Elisha, and he said, Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, except in Israel, now therefore, please take a gift from your servant. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And Naaman urged him to take it, but Elisha refused. Elisha did not accept the gift from Naaman because what Naaman received from the Lord could not be purchased. So Naaman said, Then, if not, please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth to dig back to Syria in order to worship the God of Israel on Israelite soil, for your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. Yet in this thing may the Lord pardon your servant, when my master goes into the temple of Rimmon to worship there, and he leans on my hand, and I bow down in the temple of Rimmon, when I bow down in the temple of Rimmon, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. Then Elisha said to him, Go in peace. 
Therefore, Naaman departed from him a short distance. 2 Kings 5 verses 15 to 19 Elisha was telling Naaman to go serve his master in peace. Greed takes control of Gehazi. Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, said, Look, my master has spared Naaman this Syrian, while not receiving from his hands what he brought, but as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. Therefore, Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him, and said, Is all well? And Gehazi said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Indeed, just now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. Therefore, Naaman said, Please, take two talents. And he urged him, bound two talents of silver in two bags, with two changes of garments, and handed them to two of his servants, and they carried them on ahead of him. When Gehazi came to the citadel, he took them from their hand, and stored them away in the house, then he let the men go, and they departed. Now he went in and stood before Elisha, his master. Elisha said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? Gehazi said, your servant did not go anywhere. Then Elisha said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman will cling to you and your descendants forever. And Gehazi went out from Elisha's presence leprous, as white as snow. 2 Kings 5 verses 20 to 27 Thank you for listening to chapter 4 of the book, The Divided Kingdom, from the book series It's All About Worship and To Whom You Worship by Doris N. Whaley Smith. The complete book in whole can be purchased on Amazon.com.